Good morning. Good morning. Happy first day of summer. These are a few shots from my front flower garden that I got some bee action on my wild bergamot. And so, so today, anyway, I hope you enjoy the garden I think tour. it's the first day of summer. It's the 21st. You see my little, little cucumbers there? I'll probably pick that later on. Oh yeah, I got a couple more over here. A bunch of little ones. They're not ready yet. I have to lock the gate so the dogs don't get in. And when I walk into my garden, these are my peppers. These are sweet peppers. Um, and different tomatoes. I know that these two are um, Kellogg Creek, I think it was. Because these were two I did from seed that I didn't kill. And a lot of the rest of them are different ones that I, I bought on sales and at schools uh, when they did their plant sales. And I got a little pepper action right there and a lot of blooms. So typically peppers don't go crazy here where I am. Look at that dill, it's pretty. Um, until they love September, but we have been getting some. So, I definitely have some cucumber beetles working on my cucumbers here. I didn't plant as many cucumbers because we had so many cucumbers last year. I, I almost had, like, I, I didn't almost. I had, like, anxiety about coming to the garden because I didn't know what I was going to. I mean, I can only make pickles so many ways. We got zucchini over there that are growing. This is my, this was my um, container kit garden that I started and we our zinnias and we actually have some little bitty green beans coming on. So those have done okay. These were, <laughs> these were tomato propagations that went too long. I just didn't have time to get to them. So John got to them for me and they do not look great. There's a bunch of them. They're all separated because they're different kinds. But we're going to take the ones that look the best and they will go in the back in ground garden. Some of those actually look pretty good. So then this is my corn bed. And we're using old seed in this bed. And um, but it's Haas seed, so I know it's it's not that old, and it's a pretty a pretty good seed um, they have to do germination testing in the state of Georgia so I knew it had a high germination rate I knew that would be a little less because it was older so we planted it all up as you can see the bigger ones are the ones that came forth and then I did I've done other plantings and those are kind of the ones that are the smaller ones popping through. And then yesterday I came through and I put in some, a friend of mine um, from my Azure Hall had given me some in our seed swap. She had, I think they were called gray stripe sunflowers. The seeds were really interesting looking. Well, I planted them all, I interplanted them all up in here. So where there's no corn, hopefully there'll be a sunflower and this little bed has just been such a pretty bed. It has basil, it has dill. The dill's kind of laying down from all the rain. Flowers. It has three different varieties of hybrid tomatoes, snapdragons. Um, and it has just been a pretty little bed. It has done really well. I mean, it is loaded down with tomatoes. This one, not so much. It has blooms now. This one has come on later. So, um, I do know this one had a little bit of blight early on and I kind of treated it and it really came back fine. So, and that, like I said, these were all bought out. I didn't start any of these three. 
Look at the size of those. I think this one is the Big Daddy, and this one is the um, um, Better Boy F1 Hybrid. So, so yeah, those are doing pretty pretty well. And those Snapdragons are really pretty. So, <laughs> so these this is our two different. That's our Purple Passion, and then this is our Jersey Giant um, Asparagus Beds. I do weed in here. It doesn't look like it. They keep coming back, but I keep weeding. And in the middle, this is our rhubarb. Okay. Yeah, it's that big. And the second plant isn't looking great, but this one, look at this. I mean, I can't even, I can't hold the camera and it's massive. It's massive. And something is nibbling on the leaves there. So, I'm not, I'm not totally sure what that is. I need to probably do some research since it's my first year growing rhubarb. So, yeah. That's my catnip mint. It is flower, starting to flower. Um, it has seen better days. But, in the afternoons, the bees are usually all over it. And this was what's left of my carrot bed. I have put in, uh, this is an Amish paste tomato I put in there. I've planted some dill. I've got some holy basil and marshmallow in here I planted. And it also um, tends to want to grow grass in this one. I'm not real sure why. And then this one that was our soft neck garlic we did. Uh, that's another paste tomato, which it's really liking it in there. And these are all snapdragons I, I did from seed. It's my bag of strawberries. <clears throat> this is a volunteer. I just volunteered. Uh, dill. So this bed I planted up yesterday, and I am trying something in a bed. <laughs> it's not mounded. You don't always have to do it in a mound. If you do your research, but I planted um, a three sisters bed, and so this has four corn plants in it. It has some zucchini, which is a little different because typically you're going to do a winter squash or a pumpkin. I did zucchini, I figure it's close enough. And then um, I also got some stringless, um, I can't remember the name, but it was a stringless green bean, it's a bush variety. And so that's in here, and I also stuck a couple of those sunflowers as well in this bed. So we're going to see how it does. And then this bed is all um, peaches and cream corn. This is a different corn seed. It's a sweet corn, though. And, um, yeah. So I planted those yesterday. We got a lot of good rain last night. We have more in the forecast. So... I'm hoping I get some good germination rates on these. These are our little North Carolina Mountain um, cherry tomatoes. And I, I got them all tied up. They're staked up. And there's a few peppers, sweet peppers in there. But I did come in and on the other side I planted some basil from seed. I just direct sowed it. So we'll see if it comes up. But these are pretty they were kind of slow to get going with our mild spring but they're loving it now and these are pet the same these are like the peppers we got from North Carolina I know they're a sweet pepper but I don't remember much else and I did come in here and I sowed a lot of um, basil I did a I did an Italian basil in here so um, from direct sowing so I'm hoping that that will take off. And this is my lone, this, I, this is pitiful. This is my rose tomato. It's the only one I had survive. And it's, it's planted in here and I um, direct sowed holy basil seed all around it. So I'm hoping she'll grow up out of it and we'll have holy basil in here. It'll be wonderful. And then, <laughs> show you this bed yeah 
So if you think back to a few months back, I did a video out here talking about the square uh, foot gardening method. And, <laughs> um, and so I spaced my plants. Believe it or not, this only has... Um, in there's this is 16 foot, so I did a tomato plant. I gave each tomato plant two foot, which a lot of most people say three foot. Um, but I knew how high I was trellising, so I felt okay about it. Now, the, the bed over there, the eight foot bed over there, those are four lemon boys, and one of them actually didn't really do well so it's really only three this one these two are jubilee and those two um were some that i did and i'm pretty sure that those are uh german johnson's but not a hundred percent so and then if you can see all the borage Usually the bees are like all over the stuff. So, and I do have calendula. There's also a lot of sunflowers I did. There's, this is one of those Mexican sunflowers we did. I got that from North Carolina. So I can't wait to see what these look like. Because the leaves are, they're even a little bit different than um, these other dwarf sunflowers. But there is calendula in here. That's what that is. <laughs> it's being overshadowed because the borage went insane back here. And then I do have one Italian basil right here. And, and you can make great tea with that. Just saying. Um, I mean, these things are loaded down with tomatoes. Loaded down <laughs> but I noticed yesterday I'm definitely starting see that is a bean beetle and they're horrid they will take you out so I also have bush blue lake bush beans in here and I haven't picked any from here yet they're just now flowering so um, this has been a really good companion planted bed so I'm just kind of coming out here. See, I can see this one. See, there's more. These things just like will multiply. And I tried all the essential oil, the Captain Jacks, last year to get rid of them. And yeah, that, none of that worked. And I hate it. I just took all those leaves off. But I'm trying to get these little boogers where I can. Because what works is catching them and destroying them so and if you see their little babies they're like um i don't see any if i do i'll show you but they they are like these little yellow teeny tiny dots of stuff and they're all together kind of gold to yellow but and so yeah and I'm pretty sure that's some poke salad coming up in there. That's what that looks like. We have got poke salad so bad. That's exactly what that is. That's poke salad, y'all. <laughs> I just throw it over the fence. <laughs> it comes up everywhere. This is another one of the Mexican sunflowers. And something was eaten on this one. So, I don't know if the bean beetles would eat that. I don't know. But, those are the first of the green beans. So, hopefully, by the weekend, I'll be able to pick those. But, yes. So, this bed. And then, on this side, we have the yellow. These are zucchinis, y'all. These are the biggest zucchini plants I've ever grown. And so, if you can see the little yellow zucchinis in there. Oh, there's a big one in there. I feel like I'm in the jungle. I'm trying to get in here and get to it. All right. 
we go. That's a nice harvest. I'll put that in my pocket. So, I'm, I'm not seeing any more, I don't think, that are ready. And somewhere in here, yeah, there's cantaloupe growing. I think she's trying to find her way out of this jungle. Yeah, there she is. And she'll just come out and grow. Let's see. Yeah, there's another one, but I'm going to let that one stay. Yes, I know all the jokes. I'll come out here later today and it'll be massive. But the yellow ones had not quite been like that. And then some more borage. And I have another. Um, there is another cantaloupe. Here she is. And there she is. So, yes. And then on the back. On the back, I did. These are the California Giant Zinnias. So, she's going to open soon. Several of these are going to open soon. And on this side, I have marigolds and sweet peppers. And so, a lot of these are starting to make peppers. And we've been getting a lot of banana peppers. And they are so good. They kind of have a little heat on the back end, but they are a sweet one. That one didn't do so well, but that's okay. And these are all peppers I did. And then we go from here to here. And whew, I harvested all my garlic scapes. This bed has been a weedy mess. You would think I haven't weeded, but I have. I was out here two days ago. I need to get that up. I need to get that over there. These are all my Cherokee purples. And these are not doing as well as they were. I mean, they have beautiful tomatoes on them, but... I think this bed, uh, we did amend this bed with some compost. I don't know if Comfrey loves it here, but, um, and I'm honestly not thinking that maybe you plant a tomato this close to the Comfrey because this one has struggled the whole time. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, once we get these tomatoes off, I have more I can replace them with compost. I also put worm casting. And it does look better since doing that, but um, I don't know. It's just definitely had a harder time. And I, I'm also wondering if it's because I, I did have tomatoes here. This is one of the beds where I had tomatoes here last year that I didn't move. And um, I'm, I'm wondering about that as well. But if you can see... <laughs> my bed of I'm just trying to train them to go these things just want to go wherever they want to go and they have you can see pumpkins I think that may be a honey nut squash but I don't know if it got pollinated it looks a little funky there but I've got other ones in there growing and had a few squash beetles, but not much. Not yet. Yeah, there's a nice one with a big flower on it. But these things are just, they're everywhere. And I have garlic in this bed. And then I have um, sweet peppers. And everything's happy in this bed. So, and then this bed... This one, I'm starting to get my little, um, you can see down there, eggplant. I have basil, Marconi red peppers. Um, we have the eggplant. These are some tomatoes. These two came from a high school cell. And um, that's another eggplant. 
And then these two are brandy wines and they took a hit in the storms we had the other night. This one actually, this whole thing fell over. Part of it broke. So we'll see. But it's loaded down with tomatoes and then more basil, more peppers, and this garlic's getting close. Um, so, <clears throat> and then let's walk back here. Well, actually, let me start over here. And so this is a different variety. These are just green zucchini. Um, this has been a phenomenal plant. There's another one down there. I get a couple off of this. I've been picking a couple off of this almost every other day. I have peppers in here. We have dill, cucumbers. Um, I, that is a wild bergamot that self-seeded. And I have a tomato. That's a Juliet tomato in my backyard. The dogs haven't messed with it. <laughs> it's self-seeded and I'm just leaving it there. And I had a cherry tomato, a black striped cherry tomato that was in there that died because I'm a doofus. And cucumbers and tomatoes are not great companion plants. And it just did not do well. And so I just took it out. And I planted, I think I put some okra or something in there. I don't remember. I did some seeds of something in there. And, <laughs> and so... Yeah, but this bed's been pretty good. Um, I, I'm starting to see some fungal with the cucumbers, and I probably will come out and just come in and seed a few more. So here in the garden is where we have lots of um, plants that are waiting to be potted up. We also have this one planter of thornless raspberries that we've had for a couple years. I've moved it around. I have uh, raspberry propagations that just came off of this one bucket all over my yard now from wherever I moved it. I also have some elderberry right there propagations and this is my cherry tree and we as this past week is the first week where I've actually come across a couple Japanese beetles. Last year they just defoliated the whole tree. I was so upset I thought we had lost the tree. It came back really strong this year and it's been doing great but now if you can see on those leaves um, we're getting a little bit of damage so I'm wanting to cover it with a uh, bug netting tree bag that you can get um, I can link some in the description that I have I've used them on my blueberry bushes up in my front garden um, we've also used them on some of our apple trees so <clears throat> I think I used it on my lemon tree as well and this is my potato bed. These are red potatoes I did. They're the only regular kind of potatoes. Um, and they have really liked this spot. It gets a good amount of sun and shade. And so this will probably be my potato spot. I just like it. And then we have more. These are blueberries in a bucket and eucalyptus and just other figs that we have not put out on the property yet. A lot of these were propagations. And so, and then of course my, my fern back there that took a hit and a, a late frost and I'm trying to bring it back. Of flowers. So this one I put in zinnias different types of zinnias i put in a lot of different cosmos a lot of different cosmos some sunflowers um i thought there was another flower i put in there but honestly i don't remember now so my three black buckets back there we haven't put anything in because i'm thinking i may end up putting some tomatoes in them that we propagated but i don't know yet um we'll see but they're ready to go when I need them. I've got more blueberries over there. Um, I think this one was a propagation. I don't think it took. Because I think he's supposed to have seen a leaf. So, I don't know. I don't know when he did this one, though. So, maybe it's not time yet. So, in this one, I did a tomato. This is... I think this one was a Kellogg Creek tomato. Yeah, it was. So this is a Kellogg Creek tomato. And I planted um, 
a bush variety of green beans around it. And I did a blue uh, basil. So I did those self-seeded, or not self-seeded, I seeded them, direct set seeded. And so yeah. And then those of course are figs. My pawpaws are over there. We have muscadines. Oh, and let me show you my sweet potatoes. <clears throat> So, of, so the company sent me 14 plants. I ordered 12. They sent a couple extras. So in case, I guess, one of them didn't make it. This one hasn't done anything. And so, but all the rest are doing and looking great. Um, we're really excited to see how these come out. So, and that's another fig tree that has a... Um, <laughs> self-sown tomato in it so this is one of my muscadines and it also has a tomato growing in it that's so funny and so this is the other one so on this one yeah that that one didn't do anything in that one so that's two but the rest of them all look good so that's pretty good that they sent those extras no harm no foul so I'm sure that this will fill up with leaves as these grow. Hey, Bluey. That's another muscadine. So this one and that one are pollinator partners. And so we will eventually get them set up like we have our front ones. But the two people. So I have two pawpaw trees. So this is a pawpaw. And these are from Ison's, and that's my other one. This is a sweet gum trying to come back out of a root, and we need to clip that. This is um, his rootstock bucket. So he's just keeping them alive until he decides to get back on that. Actually has time to get back on it. Uh, that's another blackberry. And then these beds... Um, these were some tomato propagations. These were ones I just propagated. And they're three different varieties of tomatoes, but I don't remember which ones. I think one of them is a Cherokee purple. I think one of them is a lemon boy. And I think the other one is called Big Daddy, but not 100%. And then we have okra. And then I actually did some pumpkins, but two of them didn't come up and those came up so what I may end up doing is this one had two come up I may just move one over and there's also some I seeded some um, sunflowers in there that I hope will come up towards the back and so this one are the same three tomatoes also we have okra and these are watermelon. So, and they, sh they have plenty of room to vine out and go in all the directions. Um, this is my cherry bush. And then this is the exact same as the other round one. This is a Kellogg Creek um, tomato that I did. And then it has the same um, bush green bean in here and the blue basil so um see there's the blueberries they're not quite ready yet our blueberries took a huge hit this year with the cold a lot of people on those did another fig our figs took a big hit too so and then this was my pollinator bed <laughs> that i built and my butterfly bush that was gorgeous really went in shock in here which where I bought it she told me it might because there is a hollowed out tree stump here we covered it and she said they still leach things but she said it'll rebound as long as you put good soil in your bed and I did and so it had a hard time at first the Russian sage did too but they are all they're starting to rebound you see 
that's all new leaf growth and there are some sunflowers planted in here somewhere some cosmos um, that I just did yesterday with seed those are petunias um, I think that's for I think that may be a verbena on the end and then that's a chamomile I think that's Roman chamomile the, this is my milkweed well, no, this is my milkweed. Those are my uh, snapdragons. And these little babies are the lavender I did myself from seed. And um, I think I want to put a little cactus soil around them. I've heard that that can help them. And so, yeah. And I'm really wondering, this one where this tomato came up in this fig, we had some micro tomatoes last year that we got that's what that looks like I wonder if that's what seeded in there <laughs> so my hope is by the end of the summer this will be luscious and beautiful and that's my hope so we'll have to wait and see if it if it turns out that way so anywho and then that's my lovely table we sit out here we have lights all around the garden we sit out here at night my neighbor gave me this she had her deck redone and the new deck is smaller and so this didn't fit and we were gonna take it off for her and we were like this is nice so eventually i want to paint it john pressure washed it for me and i just don't have the time to do it now but eventually i do want to paint it and i'm also not decided on the color because i think i want it to be a color besides white but we'll see <laughs> and um but anyway, I just wanted to give a June garden tour and show how everything is doing. I don't really have much left in my greenhouse now, um, but soon I will start, I'll be starting brassicas for fall and the process will continue. A lot of people think about the summer garden, but honestly that fall winter garden is such an easier garden because you don't have all the pest pressures and stuff and you get really some really great crops and things so but anyway i'm certainly enjoying her loveliness and as far as the back garden goes let me i guess i should walk over there and show you real quick so this is the back gonna be the back garden we got the we have the t-post we have the fence cut to put up we just hadn't had time he did get all of our mounds put out they don't look too impressive right there but they're bigger up close so there's big mounds um, of soil because we're gonna do a three sisters garden and on the this far side I'm gonna have a 16 foot cattle panel and we're gonna do the best of the propagated tomatoes on that and we're also gonna add the fourth sister of some sunflowers in there and our plan is actually to top the fence with the um, bird we bought so much of the bird netting um, that we put on our chicken run that we're thinking we want to cover the top um, because we have crows and I'm concerned about my corn and what they may do to it. So anyway, so there is some progress there <laughs> and I know John's dying to get out here and get planting, but I think he wants to, I honestly think he should plant the corn first and go and then do the fence and then come in and do the beans and the squash. So. And probably the last part will be the tomatoes we'll put in. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to take you on a, a, a June, this is, today is the first day of summer, um, garden tour. Of, this is my back garden, raised garden. And I'll probably do a, a quick video of the front garden. It's not anywhere near the same size, um, but is it going gangbusters? And um, and so it's exciting for us to think we started with that after we got rid of our front guard, front year, front yard garden, and we started with that front yard side raised bed fenced in, and that was all we had. 
and then we built this other one and now we're working on this one and it's very exciting we're really hoping that this one will eventually be the one we can produce um, I'm thinking of a small CSA and just kind of dipping my toes in the water and seeing how that goes and um, I really want to be able to, I'm hoping to be able to do it in such a way that I can also maybe have a couple shares that can go to those in need. Um, I just feel like that's a, I don't know, I feel like that's a good way to do it. So, um, so in my mind, I'm thinking of trying to maybe do a dozen shares and 10 would be, um, the ones that people buy and I would have two that I could work towards you know having for someone in need that's kind of my thinking but we're still working on all that and um, but we have to start preparing the soil and um, I feel like this is a better way to do it than just totally tilling it up um, we were gonna have some tractor work done on it and I thought mm, let's try this and so <laughs> that's what we're trying so um, I've been doing a lot of reading up on that um, and so I have some ideas of doing this and then some cover cropping and so we will see we will see how all this plays out and if it works I don't know <clears throat> it, it had a lot of wood chips it still has a lot of wood chips so, you know, I'm, I'm foreseeing, one of the reasons I want to do the three sisters are because it really helps the soil, not necessarily in that first growing, um, but in the next year, that the nitrogen and the beans and just the way that the roots of each of these plants go out into the soil, they start moving the earth. And we did put good compost on top in our big mounds. So, I don't know. I want to give it a try and see what happens. And so, and I think Don's excited about it too. That's kind of his baby. And so, we've just kind of talked through it. And, yeah. So, this is what we, we came up with. But, anyway, I hope you have a great day. And um, I hope all of you who need rain, you're getting rain. <laughs> and those who, who are sick of rain. Honestly, I'm not sick of it. It's been pretty good for us so far. I know we're scheduled for a lot more of it over the next week. So I'm just praying everyone has a happy longest day of the year. After today, the days start getting shorter. And um, I hope that you are, you are blessed. And so with that, I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.